Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Admiral Markets. My name is Chris. Today's focus is on strategy, and we're going to take a look at the live charts in just a second. Before we do that, though, be aware that this uh, webinar and video is shown to a global audience and may not be suitable for everyone. Take a look at this link, AdmiralMarketsGlobal.com. Select your country of residence and contact an appropriate entity to find out more about that and other details. Also, please be aware that trading for exchange of global financial markets is considered high risk. It may not be suitable for everyone. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This webinar is not advice and is for informational and educational purposes only. Plus, by continuing watching this webinar, you agree with this disclaimer and you're uh, aware of the risk involved when trading. All righty. So with that said, let's take a look at the calendar. we got a lot of news this week. Uh, we had last week the Euro and Kiwi big news, interest rates. Uh, today we have uh, basically ECB non-monetary policy meeting. So let's see, it's red tagged. We got employment rate or unemployment rate, claim and account change in the pound. That's also a big one. Be interesting to see the inflation rate uh, as well in the US. There's a, a forecast of 0.9 instead of uh, last time 1.4. That would be a half a percent drop. Let's see what the actual number is compared to the forecasted one. And uh, of course, the big one today, we have FOMC statement. So that's going to be interesting. Plus a, a Fed rate decision on the US. So that's, that's of course, the big one this week. Uh, we had uh, statements on uh, from Japan, from Australia already. And tomorrow we have the pound. So it is a big week in terms of news events. And I think it's one of the reasons why we do see, I, from my point of view, at least a pretty slower market at the moment. And that's not surprising if, if these news events are around the corner, then volatility does tend to dry up and uh, reduce itself. And you know that could speed up quickly when the news events are just released. And the volatility could spike up very, very quickly. So that's a bit of a risky environment that I particularly do not like as a technical trader. I like things to move, you know, pretty nicely. I don't want to have slow markets. I want to have some some nice pace. But I want it to be steady and, and sure. I want to be a, a good trend or a good impulse, but nothing very dramatic as a, as a, as a 400 pip spike in, a, in an hour or something like that, right? Um, some news event traders might might love that, might be waiting for that moment. I'm I'm different, right? But let's take a look at that heat map. Let's see if what I think is uh, indeed confirmed on this map. And well, not really a bit. Yes, we do have uh, the volatility around one two hundred. That's about average, or it's a bit below average, maybe. But we do have some pairs actually below one percent and above one percent. So. It was maybe not that slow as I as it felt to me, especially pound yen fell a lot, and New Zealand yen. And we did talk about those pairs yesterday, so let's take a look what happened uh, with those uh, specifically those, but also the euro pound and euro New Zealand. Some other pairs there, slow movers, euro Swissy obviously. That never fails, does it? And uh, we have. Pound and yen uh, above 150, so it wasn't that slow. The pound especially moved a lot. I mean. All right, let's take a look at the live charts. In the meantime, good morning. Good to see you, Caitlin. Caitlin was very busy and has been trading very nicely so far. And it was a, a while ago that he joined, so good to see Caitlin Beverly. Good morning. Beverly says that uh, she doesn't like trading around. Uh, let's see news. Let's see, got burned by NFP two months ago, two months in a row, okay, and stayed away from US dollar trades around NFP ever since. NFP could be definitely a, a big mover too. FMOC, actually a bigger mover. FMOC, it depends, sometimes it's just flat and sometimes it really doesn't move that much. Most of the time you do get some movement and sometimes it can be huge. Uh, I think NFP is a bit more consistent with that than FMOC, but Today, I think, could be a big one. Ah, that's what Beverly learned in the first two, two months of being a trader. Got it. A new trader, yeah. 
I think that as you go along, you'll probably get more feeling for what could likely happen. But still, I think it's still uh, it's not interesting for me. I think it's too too risky still. All right. Let's see. We talked about the Aussie yesterday being at support and price is still right at there. So that's one of those slow movers that didn't do much. Five candles going sideways. And really uh, no no bounce or break. And this is one of those pairs that I was keeping an eye on. But to me, no signal, no confirmation that price is moving up. I would like to see a bullish candle that uh, could probably... Preferably break above these highs here to close that chapter and you know have a higher chance that this down, that downside basically is a retracement. And uh, if some candle like this appears on the chart, just to give you an idea, that's the signal I'm looking for for upside. Um, I would, you know, probably would put a fib on that candle. I would dive into lower time frames to see how it looks like on that on that uh, 15 or 30 or one hour chart and see if there's a chance of a bit of a pullback. If I put a fib from the bottom to the top of that candle, uh, I would look for a 38 or 50, 50 fib and take a long there with a stop loss below that candle or below this, this bottom. The target, conservative target would be uh, this resistance up in here, but the main target is 60, 76.50. Now, what if it doesn't bounce, but it just keeps pushing? I would say as, as soon as price breaks through this fractal, uh, I'm not looking for upside anymore. If, if we get a candle like this, uh, I'm not that bullish anymore. We might still get a golfing twins. It might still be worth it, but um, I would definitely be more cautious because if it breaks like this and uh, we get like two candles like that, then... I, as I said yesterday, I think there's a bigger chance eventually, maybe after a pullback, to fall to the next support. So from that point of view, uh, we're at a decisive zone. Let's see what the candles tell us. Candles will lead us now. You know, it's it's time for us to uh, to plan it and, and follow that uh, the lead of the candles. It's like dancing. You know, <laughs> we'll let the the candles take the lead and. In the salsa or whatever dance you uh, you like or prefer, and uh, we follow the the rhythm of the candle. So let's see where the Aussie is, is taking us. But uh, uh, I think that both are really equally valid. The, the move up to the 100 target here, uh, or uh, because we do have a bit of divergence between this, there could be a, a bigger move back to, to these support levels. We got the tops here and the trend lines. All right, so that's my view on the Aussie. Looking at this four hour chart. Let's take a look at the euro dollar. And uh, I'll take a zip of coffee. I have uh, an extra coffee today because I have a bit of a cold, so slight one, not nothing, nothing big, but a, uh, an extra coffee was uh, warranted, I thought. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Beverly sees it as a risk. I, I agree. And Caitlin says that my drawing skills are only matched by Nenets. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> I actually do a bit of painting, but uh, in real life on a, on a canvas, not, on, not, on a, not only on a, a graph, but... I, I finished so far in the last year, I finished, uh, I'm close to finishing my second. So it's not like uh, I've been, uh, I'm a, a huge producer of uh, of art, but <laughs> I'm starting in the last two years, I think now, two years probably, I'm almost close to finish my second. Uh, well, I, I, I like them, but, you know, they're very, very colorful and very, um, uh, Nature oriented. Not everyone is a big fan of it, but um, I like very bright and happy and uh, positive uh, paintings. And I totally am not a fan of uh, of dark, depressive paintings. I don't know why anyone would want to have those on their walls. So for me, that's confusing. <laughs> but it's good that everyone is different, right? So that's great. 
Um, yeah, summer absolutely is a necessity. Can't wait to, to get a bit more sunshine. It's not been that cold throughout the winter here, but sun is, is, is definitely my, uh, my, pro- my favorite and priority. So uh, when it's like five months kind of vanishing, it seems like it's been kidnapped. I would like to see it back in one day, and I, I hope that in April we'll see it a bit more. All right. So your dollars, nothing happened. Just going sideways, making a triangle here. And the triangle is, uh, yeah, it's just respecting those trend lines and respecting the 38.2 fib. Nothing new here. Didn't manage to get to the 50. Didn't manage to break out. Yesterday I was saying that I would like to see price uh, accelerate about, about above the moving averages, so a bit of a bull flag and continue. And it didn't have that energy, didn't have that momentum to, to do that uh, and make that upside. So when that does not happen, I just stayed up, was neutral on this pair, didn't trade it. And I don't think I missed much because, one of, again, one of those pairs that just went sideways. <clears throat> so a lot of watching yesterday, uh, in my point, without trading it. This is not... Uh, a zone I, I like to trade and uh, skip that. So the same as yesterday, if we do get a break, there could be a move down to the 50 fib. I'm primarily interested in, in a bounce off the 50 fib or if price manages to break to look for a pullback and continue. This analysis is valid, I would say, unless, let's see, Uh, this is still a master candle, and I think that today and tomorrow it would still be okay to uh, to trade the upside. Eventually, though, if not by this week or Friday, I would say, then the relevance of this master candle is is decreasing. At this moment, it's still dominating the uh, the scenes here. It's clear that this uh, this candle, the high and the low, it's bullish, uh, having a high impact on uh, what could happen in the near future. But if it doesn't uh, occur, the upside does not occur within the next two days, then definitely its impact is, is going to decrease uh, quickly. Now, if it breaks through this green zone, then that bullish analysis scenario is out of the window. We might get a downtrend continuation off of the weekly chart. There's a downtrend on the weekly. And if we do get the bullish bounce, then we have a chance to go up to the orange zone First of all, it could be this target, 113.25, and then 114.60. All right, but with that said, of course, we do have a FOC now getting very close, uh, or at least uh, within uh, 12 hours from now. So that's something to be aware of. And I wouldn't be surprised if if we don't get the break to the upside now and it just stays within this triangle or maybe hits the 50 fib. Uh, let's see. Pound used the breaking this channel yesterday in my wave analysis was indicating that this is looking like a wave three start. And I think that yesterday's break uh, did you know, show that uh, potential. Now, from my point of view, it didn't hit the 21 EMA, so uh, I missed that. I was looking for a slight pullback, and I didn't get it. So the wave three was actually a bit more impulsive than than I even expected, and I expected a in a way a breakout that was impulsive, and that can happen. So uh, it looks like this could be basically uh, a, a bearish breakout with pretty good momentum. How far can it go? It's difficult to say, really. I think that at the moment, if this is a wave three, we could see a, a wave four pullback, but I'm not sure if it's going to happen anytime soon. It, you know, That's what I was expecting yesterday, too, and it didn't happen. So uh, obviously, we had a ton of candles here below the 21 EMA. We're looking at 40 in the meantime. Well, that's, that's certainly on, on the high side. And uh, obviously, this is this is tremendously uh, 
big impulse with 40 candles below that 21 EMA. So if it does get back to the 21 EMA, finally today perhaps or tomorrow, I think it's still a very good zone to look for price to, to turn around. So if it does something like this, and then at the 8 EMA turns after price has gone back to the 21, this orange band, that I think is still a very good uh, short. Now that turnaround spot could be here at this moment, the 23.6 or the 38.2 fib, like that. The point is though that at this moment, price is still falling and it could still push further. It could still be one more candle, there could still be a second candle or even a third, who knows, before there could be a pullback. Excuse me. So that's why I have the fib to here, but it doesn't have to mean, of course, that uh, the fib shouldn't be changed. As soon as we get a new low, this will be moving lower and lower as well until it stops. All right. That's the master candle right here, as Nana would say. And uh, that low has been broken. And you can see, I think that this is a serious momentum that we'll probably see a continuation like this, at least to challenge uh, this support level. Then we'll have to see how far it can break. Will it break the bottom or, or not? That still remains to be seen because we do have divergence on the daily chart. And because of that, this could be a bigger ABC zigzag up to the resistance. And from that point of view, it's going to be interesting to see how price responds when it gets into support here. And a break of that support is not the is by far a guarantee because of that because of that divergence. All right, the indicator below, by the way, sorry, uh, Stefan, is awesome as clear. You can find it by going to indicators, go to Bill Williams. Click on Awesome Oscillator. The AO is the abbreviation of that. And it's like a MACD. And it's probably pretty similar in its viewings and, and readings. Uh, it's from Bill Williams. Maybe that's why I prefer it above, I mean, more than the, the MACD. Um, Bill Williams is a trader that uh, introduced fractals, a uh, fractal concept of basically ever repeating patterns that are the same uh, on all different time frames and all different uh, no matter how you zoom in or out right you see the same recurring patterns that's a fractal and uh his chaos basically chaos theory that he introduced in uh, in his books uh saying that you know there's a random there's basically a clarity or there is a order in what seems to us randomness and chaos so it's kind of deceiving the name chaos theory we think oh there's chaos everywhere but yeah there is but within that chaos there is there's a, a higher kind of pattern that is is available so that's my <laughs> amateuristic way of explaining how i interpret it at least um, so from that point of view, I like the awesome house clear. There are also some others. Alligator and some moving averages, but I'd rather use just moving averages, normal moving averages. So that's the question. Will we get this or will we get this? But in the meantime, until that point has arrived, I think we do have some space to fall still. And I think the hourly chart is optimal for for taking a look at this uh, this currency pair. Ah, that's great. That's great, Beverly. Yeah, definitely try it. I mean, I think that uh, don't worry about the perfectionistic uh, side. It's just you know, for fun and I know what you mean though I try to sometimes be the same but um, 
I think that if you just you know treat it with with a with a mindset that you just want to have fun, then it should be fine. I, I notice that a lot of people I think are like that. They you know maybe um, scared to make a mistake, and I wonder if where that uh, why so many people are like this. In fact, nothing necessarily bad about it, but uh, it's it's good in many ways actually. But indeed, if if brought too far, it could uh, it could be a disadvantage. But anyhow. Try it. It'll be fun. I think I'm sure you will have a lot of fun with that. Um, if we look at the dollar yen, nothing new, really. It's a bit of a triangle. A, B, C, D, E, perhaps, right here. Well, if that's the case, or the E maybe has to finish still, uh, then price should not break. If this is a contracting triangle, price should not break above this. This is a golden line. Uh, otherwise, that triangle is out of the window. And, uh, well, not necessarily. It could still be an A, B, C here. And then we get a D and still an E. That's possible. But it would be a different uh, counting. In any case, Whatever the counting is, if price breaks below this green line, there could be a breakout to the downside. If it breaks to the upside, it could hit resistance due to the broken bottom that we have here. Same story as yesterday. All right, Pong Yen. Let's see. Big downside too. And uh, price just falling, falling, didn't make the pullback really. Now it's making a pullback though, back to the moving average. Let me clean up the chart here a bit. Uh, let's see. I think that it uh, looks pretty good for a short in the near future. <laughs> All right, we got a lot of candles here below the 21 EMA. I think that the next time this uh, 8 EMA turns again down, I think there's a very good chance that this time we're going to break out and continuation lower. So uh, if that happens not too uh, much before the uh, FOSC, I think that that is a I think a good downtrend continuation. We have a good momentum here, no divergence, so there should be plenty of space for it to fall one more time. Here too, we had a good trend line break. All right, so that, that looks good. Now, perhaps price will make a retracement on the four hour chart uh, to the 21 EMA. Same story. Here, too, as soon as that turns around, that's a good short, too. So I think Pound Yen looks, looks very good. And it's the same like Pound USD. If that also makes a retracement, that looks good, too. So those look like the best ones, in my opinion. And uh, Euro upside also, not bad. Your yen is, uh, is messy. I'm not a big fan of that. Those moving averages on top of each other. Kiwi is choppy. Not a big fan. All right. Dollar CAD. Said so yesterday I wanted to uh, see it make a, a move up above those moving averages and then make a bull flag back to it. And it's doing that, actually. It is making a triangle. And I think that this could be a good long, in fact. Or maybe not a good one, but it could be worth it. All right, it's a reversal trade. You can see that the price is now above the 21 EMA. And it was doing that as well right here. It was above the 21 EMA here and here. And those were just retracements. 
But the difference now is that there's double divergence. And uh, price seems to be respecting the 21 EMA at this moment. So because of those two factors, I think that there is a, a decent uh, chance of price uh, making that move up to the long-term moving average at about 135. <clears throat> now on the hourly chart, we had a similar attempt here. That was a failure. So we want to be careful with that, but I think that uh, yesterday I would have liked to see price move maybe a tad higher so that there was a clear, clear gap here. Uh, but there isn't. So it's, um, it's not perfect, uh, but reversals rarely are. So it's, it's doable, I would say. Ah, great. Good to hear that, Beverly. Uh, how would you risk manage? Well, I think that a stop loss below this this bottom is, is enough. We have a good hourly candle like this. And uh, price went back to the 21 EMA. The 8 EMA turned and went back up again. Uh, we broke the fractal here, so uh, along right now would entail 20 pip stop loss. If we put a fib from here to here, target could be 134.50 or 135, I would say. 134, you know, 92 perhaps. <clears throat> Because uh, 135, sometimes price just misses around level by a few pips. And I don't want to aim for the very last. You know, I don't want to squeeze out every single pip of that. As uh, some traders say, what is a pip or two among friends? So, you know, aiming for 135 might not be, might be good, but you don't want to aim for, with the TP, literally at 135. That's with every, with every psychological round level, I would say. So I think that's uh, an okay-ish setup. But it is a reversal. That's something to, uh, on a four-hour chart, that's something to bear in mind. Let's see. Pound odd, not making a bigger move up. And that's not surprising because of the pound weakness that uh, we did see yesterday. Excuse me. Your odd... Um, did make a bit of a bounce at the 61.8 fib though, but these here are the pound out. I think they still look a bit odd because of the, the big candle here. The uh, the candle low has been broken though. So the pound out could be ready for continuation, but it does have divergence as well. Let's see if there's something better on the menu. Certainly not the pound New Zealand. We're looking at the four hour chart. Here in New Zealand, did get a bounce. Uh, bearish engulfing twins here. So there is divergence on the hourly chart. That could be uh, a bit of a reversal here on the year in New Zealand taking place clear divergence on the 50 minute chart too Uh, 
And this is the five minute chart. All right. So this looks like uh, we're seeing a bit of a reversal. I think that we're trying to dip below the 21 EMA for the first time. So if we succeed, if price succeeds, I should say, in breaking below the 21 EMA, I think uh, there could be a reversal trade back down to the long term moving average. There could be this gap to be filled on the year in New Zealand. So that could be a reversal trade. The gap, let's see, is about 170 pips, so there's plenty of space. Now, I would expect a bit of a bounce first, because normally when we try to break through a 21 EMA, you do see a bit of a bounce, and then the second break is typically better. So that's probably the best way to approach it. Something like, for instance, here. You see that there? A break, pull back, and then we got to continue. Well, we didn't get right to the target, though, but that can happen sometimes. In this case, I think there's a bit better chance that price can get to the long-term moving average, and that has to do with the fact that there's divergence now between these stops, and there wasn't divergence between these stops. Right? So from that point of view, uh, that was the major difference uh, between this particular break and perhaps this break. <clears throat> now, one single divergence is not... A lot on the hourly chart, but might be enough. I mean, if I look at the daily chart, uh, we're at resistance, I would say, so that could help it pretty strongly as well. Now, the four hour chart, if we get a good bearish candle, the 8 EMA might turn as well. That could be another signal that we're getting that retracement. So I would like to see something like this. I think that could be an interesting uh, short. Let's see, New Zealand again, continuing a bit lower, now bouncing a bit. And, well, clearly a triangle. I'm not really fond of this particular uh, style. But if it, if it does pull back and respects the moving averages, that could be a pullback before it breaks. The same like the dollar yen. So there could be that yen strength side here too. All right, All New Zealand didn't make the zigzag that I was hoping for, just kind of rides along the 21 EMA. And that was the alternative that could happen indeed with, uh, with a 21 EMA like this. Right? If you have a good strong momentum like that, you might not get a zigzag. You might just kind of ride along that moving average. All right, so I think that's still a, a dip down here and a turn could, could be a a way to take the out to the upside. All right, that's uh, a quick look at uh, many of these pairs. Does anyone have a particular pair or time frame in mind that they want to review again or... Uh, or a setup you might find interesting, or are thinking about, or perhaps you're in a trade at this moment. I'm just looking at some other pairs here that might be interesting. Kiwi has a bit of divergence, so there could be a, a bit of retracement there. And it's at support too.
So the kiwi could be in a bouncing spot at the moment. We do see a bullish candle here. So if price manages to uh, to put our order candle like that, and uh, maybe one more, and we trace back to that same 21 EMA, it could be the bouncing spot there. So Kiwi seems to be making a potential turnaround against the, the dollar, against the euro as well. See, euro yen is it's not that appealing to me. On a daily chart, it made a pretty strong uh, bullish retracement. And there's no divergence, so this could be easily a retracement for more downside. And eight EMA didn't turn back down, but if there's a can like this, I think that'll be uh, an interesting signal for uh, a continuation lower. All right, let's see how far it can fall. One twenty, let's say, is the target. One nineteen twenty-five. We had a very clear 61.8 bounce. First target in line is uh, minus 272. All right, let's see. Beverly is asking about the odd yen. Let's take a look. Ah, yeah, we had a bearish candle today eight EMA is flat the close was not very near the low <clears throat> but certainly the candle was bull a bearish and uh, there's a good chance that this zigzag is completed we did poke through this low here and uh, this could be a turnaround just like it was here so from that point of view, I think that makes a lot of sense. Just looking at this daily chart, let me get rid of this, this channel that broke already a long time ago. We don't need that anymore. And we can take off this fib because we know that it reached the target already. Let me just quickly take a look at some other charts. Monthly is at a resistance spot, I would say. Looking at this monthly candle high. All right, this looks like a good momentum too to me. And I think yesterday we talked about the fact that there could be a head and shoulders. So on this four hour chart, we had a very pretty serious dip below the 21 EMA for the first attempt to break it. Here we had some attempts, sorry. Uh, potential breaks, but they were just uh, small retracements. So I think that uh, considering what we saw in the daily chart, considering this momentum, considering what this looks like a, uh, a small little flag, I don't think that it will be able to break above the 21 EMA that much here. And that could be a turning spot for continuation down. A fib like this might uh, signal these two fibs at the most likely tuning spot. And 
and uh, these as targets. Now, price might fall further than that, who knows, but that would be conservative targets. Looking at looking at the daily chart, we can see the price might fall like this, try to break below the 21 AMA, but then bounce again and then perhaps continue. Something like that. Break, pull back, continue. That will become more visible when, when this breaks. All right, another way of looking at it is this trend line. If it breaks that trend line, that could be already an early breakout. Another way of doing it is, you know, we do have a, a series of bullish candles. So there could be a couple of them, as I said. As soon as the 8 EMA turns back down, let's say we got one more bullish candle like this. And then one more like that. And we get something like this. Right? And then you see the 8 EMA doing like this. And then that could be the signal of, uh, of a continuation downwards. That could be out of 4, but it could be in 1 hour too. And maybe on the hourly chart, we will have some, some pin bar like this, for instance, or doji, and then, and then a pin bar, sorry, then a bearish candle like this. That could be very interesting, I think. All right, so, so far, I think Aussie Yen downside looks interesting to me. Um, let's make a quick recap then. Um, the euro dollar upside looks interesting to me. Pound U is the downside. Uh, dollar yen downside break. Pound yen pullback continuation downside. Aussie. Well, I, I thought originally upside, but now it's taking very long. But if it does manage to break, maybe we'll have a breakout like this. <laughs> Of course, try to keep an eye on what this Aussie is doing for the Aussie N2. The Aussie N does look bearish, but if for whatever reason uh, the Aussie breaks above this resistance zone, these resistance zones, then uh, I want to be careful with the Aussie N as well. All right, Kiwi looks like there's a potential for reversal, but these are maybe less interesting because they're reversal trades to the downside and upside. Downside of Europe and Zealand. Dollar cat looks like it's a reversal to the upside at the moment, right now. And that's it, I guess. Yep. Aussie yen reversal back down. Yeah, that's my uh, my two cents. I think I said something about the euro yen too. But no, probably not. I was talking about the daily chart, I think. Yeah, the daily chart. Sorry, that's it. The daily chart. Yeah, if it uh, if that makes a, a dash down like this, I think we got a good chance of still falling. But that's more of a long term uh, potential, I would say. Uh, pound catch. Certainly, we could take a look at that. All right, pound catch. Let's take a bird's eye view quickly.
Alrighty, big move down. A lot of candles below 21 EMA. I am not 100% sure. Obviously, it's bearish, but I'm not 100% uh, sure at this moment if the retracement is finished. Probably it is. <clears throat> this is a quite a, a bit of a choppy zone, so it's not an easy thing to pick the turning spot when it takes that long. But it is uh, trying to, or it is breaking below the 21 EMA now with a couple of candles. But I'm still a bit hesitant with this one because it's 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 kind of mild break, small candles. And uh, it's been quite choppy on this four-hour chart, and the support level is not broken. I uh, definitely think it's bearish, but I just don't see any particular setup that I think is interesting right now. Uh, it would be nice if it moved a bit higher, to be honest, like this, and then turned again. That would probably be a bit more pleasant. Make a bit wider bull flag, bear flag, like this. Bounce one more time. It's at the bottom of a bear flag right now, potentially. And then start to do it like that. That would be my, my preference. Well, if it will do that, I don't know. But um, <clears throat> at this moment, I don't think it's worth the risk of shorting right into that uh, potential support. Uh, if it bounces, that's great. It will bring price probably higher, which would be better for a short. Uh, if it breaks... Uh, and we'll have to break through those bottoms too and hook back and I can look for continuation. But that will take some time. So that's not something probably that, uh, that you know, will happen soon. All right, so we got some time left. Uh, this, uh, you know, we use the moving averages a lot uh, in this webinar. Like the last few weeks, we've been doing. Does anyone have a particular? Uh, I want to maybe talk a bit about some extra um, items here. Does anyone have a particular preference for looking at price action, moving averages, trend lines, wave analysis, uh, any other indicator? I'm not sure if I can help with that. If you choose, for instance, an indicator I don't use, I might not be able to help that much. But uh, does anyone have a particular, or Fibonacci, for instance, uh, does anyone want to look at a particular uh, indicator that we can discuss in, in more detail in the remainder of this, this webinar? Sorry, I'm a bit probably slower than usual because I have a slight cold, so I hope I'm not talking uh, nonsense during this webinar. But um, yeah, this is what I see at the moment from a market point of view. It's quite fascinating to see how How price is, uh, is is amazingly bearish on the pound USD. Once it really starts to ride, look at that 8 EMA. Stay bearish all the time. 
it's it's just fascinating. What a ride. Yeah, we definitely could do that. That's uh, any particular pair that you want to take a look at, Kath? Any any preference? Ah, thank you, Beverly. <laughs> I have a feeling I'm slow today, but that's <laughs> hopefully only my own observation. Okay, so I'll just ch choose one then, I guess. Um, let's see. What can we look at? Uh, let's take a look at uh, Ozzy. Why not? Huh? Let's see. Let's choose a, a blank template. Normally I have red, blue, but let's let's go for uh, for these black and white candles. Maybe something different. I'll get rid of these two moving averages. I think even if you look at price action, uh, it doesn't hurt to have one or two moving averages on on the chart. Uh, but let's just start without anything at the moment. We can even take this away. All right, so there are various ways to look at it. Candlestick patterns, of course, are very famous and can be used to identify turning spots. And uh, there are people out there that have statistics about those, those patterns. And what really is striking is that those patterns, if you only look at the patterns themselves, Basically, ah, good, great to have you here, Stefan. Hope to see you next time, indeed. Uh, Stefan is uh, sending uh, the greetings from uh, from Munich to everyone. So, if you look at patterns, they're better on a on a daily or weekly chart or monthly chart, in fact, and sometimes four hour chart. So that's one thing. The lower the time frame, uh, the less profitable they are as a standalone concept doesn't mean that price action on a four-hour chart is not good but if you if it support with other things and support with maybe moving averages or trend lines because then basically we just see more signals of price action occur that are perhaps at random or we don't have the same importance when they occur on higher time frames so i think candlestick patterns are always valuable and always good but that's one thing that when you look at statistics become clear that if you only trade that, um, it, they're less reliable as a standalone thing on a 15 minute chart. So that might not be so surprising, surprising for you. That's one thing. Uh, second is uh, we can use price action just looking, we can use it at two things. We can look at candles and try to read the information that it provides. Right, this is a bullish candle. We know that, but we can look at other information. How far is the close you know, off of the high, and how far is the open? How you know how much wick do we have here? How much wick do we have on both sides? Basically, is the candle uh, a big candle relative for its size uh, on that time frame? Just looking at one unit of a candle is already gives us information about. Uh, the, the the battle that bulls and bears have on that particular candle. So candlestick patterns are just specific combinations that make it more interesting. But each candle itself has a value to 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 look at, right? For instance, uh, here we can see now that could be a bit of reversal or pullback in this case. Let's zoom in here and. Uh, Another bearish candle, another bearish candle, bearish in control, bearish in control. And here we can see a first sign that that might be over. The reversal might be over, and we still get pullback like that. Obviously, when you get in a, a range like this, you're going to have more ups and downs, but eventually you're going to have one side being a winner, and you'll have multiple candles showing in one direction. So each candle has a value in its own. 
that's the basic kind of um, the lowest unit, the smallest unit, the candle itself. Then a couple of candles can make patterns. Two, three candles can make patterns. Candles and patterns. Uh, and then you have the third step, which is looking at a series of candles, a series of momentum candles, a series of corrective candles. This is bullish momentum. Why? Because there are a multiple or a majority of these candles from here to here are bullish. The bullish candles are majority. The bullish candles are bigger. And the bullish candles have closes mostly near the high. The bearish candles are small and on average and are more indecisive. So when you look at groups like that, you can just discover and you use momentum and correction as well. Then when you connect momentum and correction, you can identify chart patterns and you can identify waves. And then you can do wave analysis, which is the last step. So that's like a hierarchy of from the very basic unit of a candle all the way to wave analysis, right? Now, not many do wave analysis is not necessarily needed. You don't have to do that to, to, to trade it, right? But this is just like step by step, and but you don't have to do all those steps. Um, it's up to you which one you think is handy, which one has value, and which doesn't. Some people only look at uh, candlestick patterns. Focus on that, and that's fine. All right, so yeah, if you only use candlesticks, indeed, uh, you, you on the time, on, on the smaller time frames, don't use anything else. Uh, you're going to get some some clues there that might throw you off in some cases. Uh, depend, well, it depends on your experience, too. I mean, I'm sure that a trader that has been uh, trading, uh, uh, you know, very much focused on candlesticks for very long, let's say 10 years or whatever, decent amount of time, and only look at candlesticks, uh, might even do very well on a 50-minute chart without indicators. But that's because they probably have a lot more kind of, they look at the charts in a different way than if you're trading the charts for one, two, three years. They would probably filter out certain candlestick patterns um, based on that experience. All right, so... Uh, let's just randomly, I don't know how to approach it. Um, it's a bit difficult because I can, you know, obviously start pointing out to candlestick patterns that have already occurred, but it's it's always a bit different in live than, than looking in the past, obviously. So that's, that's a bit difficult to, to approach it, how to, to start talking about it, but... Obviously, when you when you see, um, there is always a chance when something like this occurs that there could be a, a reversal coming about, right? Let's say we don't recognize that at that point and don't take that trade. But, I mean, in retrospect, we can see that when a, a candlestick panel like that occurs, that, that doesn't have to be necessarily surprising, right? We have a break of these lows. We had uh, some... Uh, divergence probably here as well uh, but even then just a candle that has that size going against that particular uh, candle stick of that size with is, is actually the first bearish candle uh, that goes against the prior bullish momentum with such a magnitude right so that could be uh, a first clue that this momentum to the upside is over that's my point and after that, you get one more bearish candle and another bearish candle, and then you see a bit of consolidation. So with momentum like this and a consolidation like that, uh, this is typically a signal that we're going to get one more bearish momentum to the downside. It's typically 
uh, a zigzag pattern, if you like wave analysis, right? So how to, to trade that could be a break, for instance, uh, of this low right here. This is still a bullish candle. So when that breaks, that could be a breakout trade right there to the downside. That could be a pending order style. Um, if one wants to trade a candle break, then waiting for this candle to break, for instance, here and close could be a way to trade the continuation. Another way could be to put a fib on this candle, this breakout candle, and uh, wait for price to get back to that fib, put the stop loss above it, and try to trade that continuation. Putting fibs on strong candles is always a good idea, I think. So it could have been done with this candle too, but price didn't retrace. And it could have been done on this, these two candles or even on this candle. Like that. Uh, why is that a good idea? Because typically strong candles um, do not get broken. So that's one way of approaching it, is putting a fib on a, on a strong candle. Now, a candle like this is not strong, right? Because it's inside the previous candle still. So those will be ways to try to catch the continuation of a turnaround here. Now, what I like to use is another extra step in between. I talked about the basic unit being a candle, then candlestick patterns. Then I talked about swing high, swing lows, right? Swings, bullish swings, bearish swings, impulsive and corrective. But basically, there's another step, actually. And that is... This one right here, where how do you know that the swing high, swing low, swing low is over? And in that case, I count candles often enough. Five to six candles not breaking a high or low is typically an end of a, a swing high. So when we have one, two, three, four, five, six candles not breaking this high, that's another reason that uh, this particular swing high, swing low, this bullish impulse uh, is most likely over. All right, so that would be another reason why we could look for a retracement. You don't even have to use a fib. If you don't even want to use a fib, that's okay. Uh, you could basically try to, I mean, it does help. You can see that the 50 fib is here. But even without that, right, once we have six candles not breaking this high here, um, basically a square up or a retracement of this, this candle right here that has been the, Let's say it's the master candle at this moment, which is the dominating candle. It's the strongest candle. A retracement of that candle, and you can just visually see that already, about halfway is already a, an interesting short. So right about here, that could be a way to short it with a stop loss above that candle high. Now, if we look at now, we see basically nothing dominating. We see a correction. All of these candles piece by piece, are giving us some information. But these individual candles are not as important now because of the fact that when you look at the entire structure, it's going in sideways. So this is a correction at this moment. And the candles are showing that because why? There's not a majority of the candles pushing one direction. Half are bullish, half are bearish. Most of the candles are smaller candles, and the closes are not necessarily very near the high or low. You got a lot of wicks. So it's definitely indecision. So from that point of view, uh, we have no real information about what's going on right now. We just know that it's indecision. So when it's indecision, it makes sense to look at bigger structures and say, okay, what happened here? We had an impulse, here we had an impulse. So this is the, the box. So that's why I was looking at, okay, a bullish break could be interesting for upside, but a bearish break might indicate also that the upside is over. When you look at a box like this, it could make sense to look at the four-hour chart as well.
All right, four hour chart. And what do we see here? We see at this moment, we see actually price is still part of this, this bearish impulse, but we got support right here and uh, we have an indecision box right now. You can see the four hour candles, dojis, small bullish candle, nothing special there. So for the moment, the dominating bearish candle is still this one. We retraced it halfway already. So there's no short based on that. I mean, one could maybe think, okay, that's a bearish candle, trade it halfway. But considering the support level close by here, I think we're trapped in between support and resistance. I don't think there's anything to trade right now, right here. All right. Looking at this four hour candle, uh, four hour chart, sorry, we can see a lot of candles riding to the upside. And um, sometimes you don't get retracements of strong candles, right? There was one way we said look for retracements. This candle never squared, never retraced. This candle was, right? 38.2 fib, 50 fib bounce right there. And that was the continuation. That's a strong candle, but uh, it was really challenged quite a lot. Eventually, price did make one more move up, though. From a candlestick perspective, we didn't have really strong signals of a turnaround here. I would say the first clear signal that we were moving away uh, to the upside was this, this candle. Here we had a clear engulfing twin dough, and that could have been uh, a very clear pattern. When a pattern like that occurs, uh, it might not be worth waiting for a retracement. It could be worth taking an entry order right there. Right, so engulfing twin, you can see price riding up and then bumping into some resistance with these two wicks. That could be a good signal to take profit. All right, so wicks also say information like here, for instance, we got some wicks here. And that could be another way to say, okay, that's worth uh, taking a, uh, uh, a potential trade to the upside, right? But then when you see engulfing twins and a doji, could be another warning sign that it might not go that far. So this is how you can use it. Now, this sounds maybe easy, but it definitely, of course, is more difficult when implementing a live. And you might have some 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 candles that do give you hesitation like this doji is that worth taking profit probably yes right it might be already a reason to exit the trade right there and then you see the price still continuing and you say oh i wish i didn't do that and then you still see it move down and then you think oh it was good i did so you know you're gonna have uh, you're never gonna make perfect decisions it's always gonna be sometimes uh, too early or too too late but try to, uh, when you interpret the chart, try to make the best call possible at the time. And don't worry about uh, second-guessing yourself in retrospect. It doesn't help anyhow. But each of these candles basically has information, and it it's, gives us a way to interpret uh, price action. Uh, the first very basic step is just looking at the strength of the candle, looking at the wicks, and looking at its relationship with the candles around it. Then you have already a basic candle analysis and if there are any patterns. If there is a consolidation or a strong momentum, you can use that to identify impulse and correction. Um, once a, basically uh, a momentum is visible or a correction is ending, you can use the five to six candle rule to Identify the end of an impulse. And when that happens, you can label impulse and correction and even look at chart patterns. Are, are there any questions that might have popped in your mind after me talking through the charts here? Now this, uh, I'm looking at the four hour chart, but it could be easily done in a five minute chart, but once again, Either you use supportive material to help you identify what moments on the chart have more value, 
or you have a lot of experience. Uh, because if you don't have that experience, you might be kind of swimming without sufficient um, practice. Yes, it's like a language indeed. Exactly. It's a communication. And there's a lot of info to be found there. Absolutely. And it makes a lot of sense that people aren't big fans of this. And um, if you if you like it, still it might make sense to make, for instance, add one moving average just to get a, a bit of info quickly. And uh, Traders with a lot of experience won't even need it because they know where that moving average is. But if you're within the first five years, I think it still makes a lot of sense to, or even longer. Still, traders um, like myself have it on the chart because I like I have a lot of moving averages because I like moving average trading. Right, so that's a bit different. But even if you're very focused on price action, adding one moving average, many traders do it just to get that extra kind of grasp, extra kind of handle about what what the price is uh, showing to get a bit more uh, info there immediately like a 21 ema right gives us good info uh, it gives us info for instance that this candle although it's clear that that's a bullish candle right but without that moving average we might underestimate it and with that moving average we can see okay that might be actually the continuation uh, this could be an impulse. This was the pullback, and this is the signal that we might go back up again. Let's see on a five-minute chart here, for instance, right? This this was a pullback to the twenty-one EMA. That could be the end of the pullback. Um, so, under a five-minute candle, uh, I don't know, let's see, here, might not have that same importance as this one, for instance. Small difference, perhaps, but let me see if I can find a better example. Here, for instance, this might be a pullback, right, big wick, so that could be a short. That short didn't work out. And the moving average didn't help it either, right? But what could be visible maybe if we had divergences, uh, uh, an indicator at the bottom is that there could be a divergence here. In that case, we know that there could be a bigger retracement. So there's, there's definitely going to be more information, quicker information on the five-minute chart. Uh, some of that is going to definitely not work out. Just like the same could happen on a four-hour daily chart, right? But statistically, uh, there are going to be more errors on a, on a five- or 50-minute chart than on a four-hour chart. So that's why uh, typically you want to have more supportive material than just looking at candlestick patterns on a five minute chart but there's plenty of reason still to to trade it if we use some extra kind of concepts that that help support it a little bit of a pull a pair flag right here Like this, right? And even on a five-minute chart, look at all these candles fall in one shot. Uh, now, we get a bit of a bigger correction if you use my five-candle rule, six-candle rule, then here, you know that that swing high is, is over. But ultimately, it just makes a triangle and still breaks one more time before we get a, uh, a bigger consolidation. Five to six candles not breaking the low. In this case, not a small consolidation, but a big reversal. Clear momentum.
Now, in this case, uh, you know, candlestick patterns, well, here there's a wick, here there's engulfing twins. I would say uh, even here. This candle break below this small consolidation or even the next bottom. There are a lot of ways you can handle this. Right here to break. Using fibs could be, again, a, a way to do that. But uh, I wouldn't do it the same as on the four hour chart with, you know, on a four hour candle unless there's a very, very strong candle. Because look at this. This is, even this is a very strong candle, but still that low gets broken slightly. Uh, now that can happen on all time frames, but still, I, I wouldn't use fibs on very small candles like this. I don't think that makes sense. It does make sense in a four hour chart. I don't think on a five minute chart. I do think on a five minute chart, there's nothing wrong with placing a fib on a, on a swing high, swing low. For instance, like this. Obviously, that's fine. But I wouldn't do it on candles or even putting it on, on a swing high like this. That's still okay. At least a couple of candles like this should be fine. 50 fib. And down it goes. So that's fine. But I, not on individual candles. I would say that's a bit too aggressive. All right. So thanks for joining. That wraps up uh, today's webinar tonight. No, tomorrow. Nenneth and I will be talking actually about moving averages by coincidence. So looking forward to that. We'll be together in the same, uh, in the same room this time around. Usually we... We speak together in the webinar, but we're at two different locations. So uh, I in Prague, he in Belgrade. But this time, we'll be both in Prague, sitting next to each other. He's visiting Prague for two days, and uh, we'll have the webinar live together. So looking forward to see you then, and wish you all great trading. Cheers, everyone, and be careful with uh, the news events. Cheers.